Warning! This podcast contains all loss of sense of reality. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC Not TV podcast for Westworld, Season 1, Episode 8, Trace Delay. I'm your host, Dom. With me, we have Mike and John. Hello. Hello. How's it going? This is good. Mm. <laughs> the show is good. As is every week. It's getting better and better, and I think like I, I, I don't think I have anything to add. Me. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we basically pick up right where we left off with Bernard. He's kind of struggling with uh, reality. He, he's dealing with the fact that. He's a robot that is aware of robots and how they work and all the inner functions and, and everything. But he's still struggling with his own reality. Whether or not these memories are real memories or if they're implanted memories. And, uh, and does it make him alive? Yeah. And Ford was just like, that's the same problem I had with Arnold. Did Ford kill Arnold? It sounds like Ford killed Arnold. I don't know yet. But it is sounding, you know, that is suspiciously leading us to think that. Because, like, last week, I was like, I'm pretty sure that Ford killed um, Elise. Elsie? Elsie, you mean? Uh, El- Elsie, yeah. Um, and, and... Technically. And now we find out Bernard has a flashback of him, like a, another memory of him killing Elise. Or Elsie, whatever her name is. And so technically but Ford had her killed. Then again, we don't know that she's dead. We just saw her getting, you know. We, we did help. just see, you know, Bernard choking her. I just don't want her to be dead. <laughs> she's dead. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Well, I think Hemsworth is going to go find him, so... Yeah. Or find her, rather. So... Hopefully. Yep. Uh, In the meantime, Ford has Bernard destroy all evidence of him and Teresa's relationship and all memory of it. Um, Which kind of poses some problems, because you you have some of the staff uh, who's questioning it. Um... You know, they're like, oh, you know, it's my job to know these things. I, I know you guys were close. You kept it on the down low. He's like, like I uh, barely knew her. No, no, you're wrong. I, I barely even knew her. Yeah. So, uh, I, th- I think that's going to raise some red flags. I, th- I think that's going to cause some problems. Yeah, absolutely. He's yeah. like, wait a sec. How long do you think it's going to be for uh, the staff to figure out that Bernard's a, a robot? How long has Bernard been working there? Because <laughs> they haven't figured it out in a very large amount of years. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, the woman he was sleeping with didn't know. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough. Hey, that just shows how bad uh, QA is at their jobs. Huh? huh? Yeah. Well, Ford is looking to automate the rest of the, the QA team in the meantime because uh, he found out You know, that uh, the whole thing with Clementine uh, last week was a a code that that Teresa inserted. Yeah. So... Yeah, found out, as in knew from the moment he saw it like Bernard did. (laughs) Yeah, but now he has evidence. Yeah, now he has the actual evidence, yeah. So, um, but, you know, with that, Ford and I'm assuming Bernard helped plant uh, the evidence of Teresa's death where uh, she fell from a high mountaintop and... You know, uh, uplinking something that never got sent out, so they don't know where it was going. Um, but yeah. Uh, we actually, we get Bernard uh, reinstated. We have Ford uh, has, has him reinstated, so that's great. Because uh, we need Bernard. We need him. <laughs> and, and you know, funny thing, like I think um, Miss Hale, the lady from the board of directors, is also fairly suspicious at this point, because she seems to know Teresa well, and basically, so, like, she would never betray the company. Like, there's no 
you know, there's something's not adding up. So I have a feeling if her and I wish I remember the goddamn guy's name. I'm just going to keep calling him Hemsworth because he's just the third Hemsworth. If they start chatting about the weirdness and Bernard and I don't know, I feel like the two of them together can figure this out. Yeah. I think it's only Probably. a matter of time. Yeah. Um, but uh, I see Spots in chat is asking if the host being made in Ford's basement um, is Elsie. We thought it was a replacement for Teresa, which this was last week. But I mean, you know, I got shot out the window when, you know, yeah. I mean, the theory was, hey, Teresa's dead. He's building a robot replacement and that's how he's going to cover it up. Well, out the window with that one. I have no idea. Yeah, uh, it, it's possible. Um, it may just be Ford's creating uh, more robots down there for his new narrative um, may not have anything to do with replacing anybody um, personally I think it would be interesting to replace her and then be like oh she she was just on vacation like Bernard said you know the whole time um, Yeah, I think that dynamic <laughs> would be you know a lot more interesting and who knows you know maybe it's it's more staff members technically Ford doesn't need people like if he's able to plant Bernard for this long, he does not need people to run this place. He can I mean, have no. the entire place automated. We've, like, with Bernard, we've pretty much almost confirmed, and with, with what Maeve is doing, you know, confirm that these are full-on artificial life, life forms, you know, capable of conscious thought. Like, not just robots. Yeah. So... Yeah, he could, you know, replace everybody in, working in that place with a, you know, with a host. And nobody would be the wiser. Nobody would miss the people. No. In fact, the host would do a much better job. Be much more as, uh, cost efficient in the long run because you would never have to replace employees. Um, and you'd never <laughs> have to pay your employees. So, you know. There's that. Um, but as Ford said to Arnold, you know, I needed someone, you know who could, like, see into, I forgot what he said, you know, see into the human condition or see, like, you know, their emotion and help better program it and make it real, and that was beyond the capabilities of humans, so I made you. Yep. And, you know, cranked your intelligence up to the max level, or something. Yeah. I mean, um, it seems like Bernard was just kind of an experiment, too, that Ford was trying, because he's never done, you know, he's never had staff in there to our knowledge um this is the first one we've we've seen he has plans for for other people um we didn't really get a good look at them but there was more blueprints there than just bernard so um, yeah teresa uh, not teresa oh my god uh dolores was in those blueprints um bernard was in there i don't know who else but right. i'm assuming any first generation host was actually in there and i see spots is saying you know it doesn't seem like he would uh make more hosts for his narrative uh his new storyline in the basement um the host in the basement would have to be there for nefarious reasons um i don't disagree Probably. with that statement i do not disagree with it yeah. i mean i would like more answers but i have a feeling we're going to be disappointed in the you know host being made in the basement was just to show that Hey, guess what? This is Ford. Where Ford's making extras. Yeah, more than likely, unfortunately, that is what's going on with that. It was just to show he has the, the capability of doing that, and that's where Bernard was created. Just showing you that you know he can make someone there doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean it was an actual living, breathing person he's going to use. Um, but I would love it to be Elsie. I would absolutely love that. Um, and and John would too. But that way, we get to kill Elsie and keep Elsie all at the same time. <laughs> Yay! Robo Elsie. But, Everyone's uh, happy. <laughs> um, I see Spots also says Bernard was talking to Dolores in the same basement. Was that really Arnold in the past in the old basement? So you're saying that Bernard is Arnold? No, we've seen Arnold um, in the flashback, and uh, he was not uh, he was not colored. Um, so. I would say that Bernard is not Arnold. Bernard could be based on somebody from the past, but not Arnold. I don't know. Um, anyway, you mentioned uh, Maeve, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Maeve, she wants out. She's going to do everything she can. We we actually learned that the robots just can't leave the park. Right? They, and you know, I was thinking it was a programming thing, but... Yeah, no, <laughs> they have actual C4 in vertebrae number uh, C6. Yeah. Which, why not just put the C4 in vertebrae C4? Because it's a little too on the nose. Yeah. C six is more centrally located. It's in the middle of your shoulder blades. I mean, I guess a more effective spot Blow instead of blowing off. instead of blowing your head off, it blows their whole torso up. Yeah, but without, without the head, they can't function anyway. So without the torso, there's you know less of them to put back together for like a competing company. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I mean, the um, head's going too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I guess. Um, Probably a nice blood fountain, but anyway. But um, Maeve gives herself control um, over the other hosts. And that's she gives super... herself admin privileges. Yeah, that's super scary. That's super so scary. She's... But she gives Basically... herself the sort of admin privileges where she can just... She doesn't even have to do anything special. She just has to look at the host, talk to them, and they follow out her orders. But she Is says that... it... Because she says a third person to them, sort of, you know, like she's telling the narrative, like she's the narrator, which is pretty much what she made herself. Yeah, I mean, we're we're looking at um, when when she's trying to recruit more people, she's trying to recruit Hector and his gang when they come into the the town or whatever to help her in her, you know, mission to escape and all that. Um, we we see her like basically reprogramming the town the town folk there, like telling the sheriff, and oh, everything's okay, just walk away. You know, and, and taking uh, the other two gunslingers and having them quick draw themselves. And, and it's just like, what is she not capable of at this moment? You know? I don't know. I mean, she's trying to keep the outlaws alive. Probably because she feels that uh, they're the most effective, I guess, soldiers she would need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, what can she not do at this point? Who the fuck knows? Um, <laughs> I mean, is she as powerful as Arnold is? Or not Arnold Ford at this point? It seems it. She has complete admin control. I don't know if it's necessarily Ford, but it, it's definitely uh, control over, you know, at least the, anybody under Ford has in the park. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But she doesn't... I mean, she has all that control, but she still... I mean... She would be a lot scarier if she wasn't having all of those uh, flashbacks to her previous narratives, you know, interfering, fucking up with. Uh, I mean, well, basically, she... some of it is her hers. Uh, some of it was just straight up flashbacks. Um, yeah, they weren't just like yeah. She's having like moments where she's remembering, you know, the the time. But uh, a large chunk of her her uh, flashback was actually Dolores's uh, uh, issue this episode where Dolores is kind of losing a sense of time and we got to see, they're, you know, what was going on uh, with that. And, and they're uh, acting out, you know, stuff in the present time that they're seeing in the flashback. For example, you know, Maeve is remembering the man in black murdering her and her daughter and she remembers slashing out at the man in black's neck, which yeah. didn't do shit because she couldn't hurt, you know, uh, a guest. Right. But, you know, all of a sudden she snaps back and Oh, look, there's the new Clementine bleeding from a huge gash in her throat. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and uh, we see we see her um, mentally break down, too, when mm-hmm. uh, her daughter died, right? Yeah. Her, that was a, her whole yeah. programming got fragmented. She couldn't, you know, focus. The commands weren't working. Even Ford couldn't do anything about it until he went into the tablet and... Uh, he said a trick from an old friend, which we're going to assume is Arnold. Started playing classical music. Yeah. I'm guessing that may have been a hard-coded failsafe, or maybe their programming is based somehow in classical music. I don't know. These guys are nuts. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's absolutely crazy. I love the piano tracks. I just want to say... Um, <laughs> Uh, House of the Rising Sun from the House animals. of the Rising oh, Sun. Yeah, how god. long it took me to place that. Oh my god, that was fantastic. It took me longer than Painted Black because I'm, <laughs> I mean, that was just, you know, 
that first step that no one was expecting. Like, is that painted black on a violin? Why do I know the words to the song? This one, I'm just listening to it. Like, I know this song too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's going it's on? funny because House of the Rising Sun is actually about a whorehouse. So, yeah. It, well, it, it does make sense. <laughs> well, I love that they incorporate like modern music into like this place that clearly this music wasn't around for so um, it kind of breaks immersion but at the same time it's got that sense of uh familiarity to to keep you drawn in you know so it 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 functions as two different things at once and i love it 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 reminds me of i don't know if you guys played bioshock infinite but uh that game they uh well, I'm not going to get too far into it. But anyway, they, they were stealing music from the future, basically, mm-hmm. and like rewriting them in like the, the old-timey ways. So there was actually this one part of the game, which I distinctly remember, there was this little girl singing Fortunate Son, the um, CCR song, and but she was singing it like a bluegrass kind of thing, not like the rock song that it is. And I was like, wait, what? Is, that fu- is she singing Fortunate Son? What the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. It's that same idea. It's just like, yep. is that Black Little Sun? <laughs> oh shit! It is. Yeah. Okay. They, they did some fantastic stuff. Um, uh, there there was another track this episode too. Uh, it was not you know really my style of music, but um, it was a uh, who was uh, oh, I totally blanked out on it. Who was the uh the lady who just died recently? Amy Amy Winehouse. I think it was an Amy yeah, Winehouse song. Um, was was in there. Um. They they snuck in as well, uh, much later on in the episode. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just love I love that incorporated all, and it it goes well with every you know both times that uh, the piano was playing was was Mave you know, and it just really goes really well with everything that Mave's kind of going through. Um, yeah. But now she's drawn a lot of attention to herself, you know, and and the park is on to her. They want to bring her in for to run diagnostics. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, slicing the throat of another host is kind of off narrative for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I don't know what this is going to to do for Maeve's story now. Um, I, how much control she has over herself that prevents uh, them from shutting her down and kind of stuff like that. Because we saw um, earlier on with uh, Felix and Sylvester. Um, Sylvester wanted to wipe her memory when she went in for. Uh, reprogramming and they wanted to remove the the c4 and her vertebrae and all that that kind of stuff and um which we never got clarification if that was removed or not they said that would take a complete rebuild right in order to remove it i don't think they had the time i mean we don't know how long she was under like true but i um you know we don't know how long she was under. We don't know what kind of, you know, equipment they had in that room. And a complete rebuild sounds like it's processed long enough that someone might have noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. my thoughts. I don't know. They could have removed it. It could have been some trickery that we didn't see. But in well, the meantime... It's implied that they'd have to take her fucking spinal column apart. I mean, that's like... Yeah. Probably not even work that they could do on their own. Probably you know? not. Probably not. Which maybe this may be Maeve's plan the whole time was to get caught, uh, and then force uh, the diagnostics people to to go ahead and do that. Yeah. Um, because huh. if now now mind you this this is something you may not have even thought of if the whole QA team is automated like Ford wants to do Maeve has control over all of them. Yep. Oh, Ford's handing her the keys. Basically. Like- He's, like, opening the door, like, the exit for her right there. Yeah. All she needs is the explosive out, and... Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. If he's going to put hosts in, you know, the in the QA department, that's it. Done. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, Felix absolutely does not want to wipe her, her memory. He feels bad. Uh, he can't live with... I, I guess uh, taking a life, even though it's not a real life. Um, so he, this is where we get into the metaphysics of it, right. and you could spend months debating this. But you know, there comes a point where an artificial life form is like, in my mind, qualifies as a life. 
Well, it kind of goes back to the conversation Arnold and Bernard had where, you know, he was asking him, like, basically asking him, like, am I alive? Like, like does this count? And, you know, Ar like, I keep calling him Arnold Ford. Um, Ford said, like, basically, we humans aren't that different. We're all kind of stuck in our own little loops going about our day and doing the same thing day in and day out. You know, we all get up, go to work, come home, eat, sleep, you know. So, you know, and, and I think the remarkable thing that he came up with was that, like, you know, in periods of extreme emotion, like anger and sadness, they're not different at all, really. They express grief the same way that we do. Mm -hmm. So... Like, we saw that with Maeve, especially, like, where yeah. her, her programming became fragmented. Well, guess what? Your sense of reality becomes fragmented when you deal with something to that that degree. Absolutely. You know, it, it's absolutely not different at all. Yeah, so, I, I mean, you're right. Like, at this point, what the fuck's the difference? Yeah. There is and, really none. And as, uh, in chat, as IC Spot says, um, uh, there did, did, um... Where was it? Uh, it's interesting that Felix said they are the same, but they have a more powerful brain. Uh, Maeve could be a superior Ford in a way. Um, but um, Felix saying that they have the same but more powerful brain, he's asking, um, are Felix and Sylvester hosts? Um, and at, at this point, it's impossible to rule anyone out, to be honest, but the likelihood of it is probably not. Um and, and then that goes to, if, if they are regular human beings, how do they have the vastly superior brain when, when the robot brain is programmed to be unflawed, you know? I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting Terminator I, level, you know, with this, with this show now. is. This show is a philosophy professor's either wet dream or worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, it, it, you could just spend a course on this. It's somewhere in the middle for sure. You, I guarantee you could do a course per season if this continues on. I don't see any way the show is not getting renewed for season two, uh, even though we haven't heard anything yet. Mm -hmm. but, there has to be. Oh, I can almost guarantee it. Uh, I mean, I see spots in chat says they seem less artificial now. They were mechanical at first and now appear to be made almost entirely genetic material. Yeah. I mean... The... Well, if you, you look when, when Maeve wakes up, right, and she slices... Um, uh, whose neck was that? That was Sylvester. Sylvester. I, I still trying to piece the two of them. Who was who? Cats. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I interchange them all the time. Um uh, slices Sylvester's neck, and then you have Felix taking the same tool that they use to repair the robots uh, from their incisions and stuff, uses the exact same tool to heal Felix. I don't know if it's some kind of cauterize and and tool with, like, re-putting skin on, or... I, I don't know how the tool works, but it works the same way from, from robot to human. I mean, mm -hmm. we've at... You know, we've, at this point for how many episodes been saying they're pretty much 3d print uh 3d printed flesh you know with the exception of whatever the heck their brain is made out of their 3d printed humans which is i mm -hmm. mean a shit they're doing right now barely yeah. but doing it yep. like it's promising so i'm going to imagine 50 years in the future hey guess what we can 3d print a person <laughs> have fun <laughs> I don't know. like and yeah, it's the same tool. And you know, if they you are, see, you see, Google and and Amazon and all these things are are working on their own versions of AI. You know, like, yeah. Like what's that Amazon one that I, I see in commercials all the time? Where, uh, hey, whatever its name is, uh, print me out the recipe that's on TV right now. You know, like, I mean, that's more of a you know. It's more of a Siri sort of thing. Like, it is, but it starts, it, it learns and it adapts. It's, it's more than just, hey, do this, do that. It starts understanding what your favorite things are and, and, and whatnot. The more you use it, and it starts giving you better recommendations than a typical uh, algorithm would, you know? Right. I mean, at that point, you know, 
it, I, that to would a degree, really it's mean. an AI. It's not an extensive, like, fully functioning AI like we're seeing here, but it's still an AI nonetheless. Right, like, you know, mm-hmm. that's, we're talking, I guess, virtual intelligence or emulated intelligence. Sci-fi, they use a lot of different words for really, really, really smart user interfaces that aren't just quite an AI yet. Yeah. You imagine, like, like, when we get to that level, we'll start having drones that fly themselves, you know? like No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> also, another common trope of sci-fi, make robot, robot kill. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. So what do you guys think of the new Clementine? Glommed. <laughs> I like it, because it's not the old Clementine. Yeah, no? Yeah, Seems... I miss her already. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. She doesn't deliver the line as like believable. Like yeah. you know, you're new, not a rind, you know, not a lot of no, not much of a rind on you. And I'm just like, it sounds wrong. Yeah. You should have rewritten the dialogue. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Just <sighs> just because uh, they they get decommissioned does not mean that they will not be used in the future. Um, we we see a whole scene with uh, Lee Sizemore and, and Charlotte Hale um, where she walks in on him and he's supposedly building, you know, uh, Wyatt for Ford and what he believes he, is Wyatt. Yeah. She, like, you know, he's saying I'm building this for, you know, the narrative or whatever. She goes, he's already got the narrative pretty much done. Like, you know, he dug up some old town from way back. Um, like, he, the big bad guy is Wyatt and then Lee points to the guy he's building. Like, you know, that's who I'm building. I'm building Wyatt. And she's like, that's a distraction. Like, yeah. Wyatt's already built and in the park. Right. Like I yeah. said, what he believes is Wyatt. Yeah. And, <laughs> um, you know, Charlotte's like, look, I have a job for you. Um, and she takes him downstairs and, and she wants to repurpose uh, Abernathy. Right. She uploads 35 years worth of data for reasons unknown which to us is uh probably the same reason you know her and and teresa were working together and and that's to keep the information and get it out of the park in case ford wipes everything you know then they have Mm -hmm. 35 years worth of this this data um but she wants abernathy to get on a train and leave the park and wants uh lee to write the narrative for it so is Miss Hale blissfully unaware of the explosive charge in the robot? Apparently. Because I'm at the point uh, yeah. where... I mean, if Felix and Sylvester, who I imagine are very, very low on the totem pole, know that it's there, I think everybody all the way up the chain should know that it's there. I'm just guess- guessing she never read the corporate memo. I don't know. I don't know if that's privy to information. Uh, I, I 100% expect the techs to know that because they're working on it. And more than right. likely, okay. they've probably installed a lot of them. Um, however, and they need to be aware for safety purposes, I'm sure. Yeah, however, that may not be privy to info to you know, the board. Also, this is too much data for any disk to hold. Like, All right, so back up a second. You're uploading it into a blank robot's brain because it has much more storage space. So you're going to tell me that they invented some kind of, you know, memory storage hard disk type thing yeah. that could fit in a human skull yep. and hold all that data and they don't have a version that's portable that they can carry around. Mm-mm. No. That is uh, the only thing I'm calling bullshit on in 8 episodes of this show. <laughs> 35 years worth of data now imagine us taking um all of the amount of podcasts we've ever recorded uh and taking that data right how many videos are we up to uh this this would be our third year doing it so what thousand videos 1200 sure something sure okay a lot thousand videos they average a gig each that's a terabyte some are longer, some are shorter. I mean, some are bigger, some are smaller. Right, so now, I mean, now, do do they they have like little personal discs, uh, cards or whatever that are terabyte size that you could just walk out of undetected? No, really fucking close. <laughs> yeah, close, but no. Um, I mean, but, but imagine have... thirty five years of that, and that's twenty four oh, yeah, no. hours nonstop, and that's more than one robot. I got you, but okay. we're talking. So very my point far... is, my point is. Uh, you can keep all that information in a human brain, which is basically what she's uploading it into. 
True. So it's a little different than keeping it on a storage drive. Um, so I get that. But yeah, I agree. I see spots in chat. It's a bad choice to pick uh, Peter Abernathy uh, for their mule. That will go bad for them. It sure yeah. will. It sure yeah. will. Yeah, Abernathy was having a crisis of reality. Right, which I don't think she's exactly aware of. I mean, she might oh. be. She may have picked him for that reason. But you um, know what, though? <sighs> it, he was blank. He was wiped clean. They all. She put um, all. We're gonna assume every single person in there is. Uh, yeah. So with she that put logic, all... she could have just walked in. The first one closest to to the door uh, would have been good enough. But she seemed to have sought him out for some reason, and I'm not quite sure if it was intentional or if it's just let's just pick one that looks cool. I don't know. And you know, for mm. narrative purposes, it just, you know, it just happened to be Abernathy. But I mean, if he was wiped clean, and I mean straight up blank, back to factory settings. He probably not gonna have whatever caused his like reality conflict still programmed well, into if he I don't was know. truly blanked. But that's the thing. It doesn't seem like any of them are truly blanked right. because of whatever is hard coded into them from either Arnold or, or well, Ford or something. We even, we even saw with Bernard. Did you ever make me kill anyone before? No. no just what? before he wipes his memory, he has a memory of what was probably something that was wiped already, and that that's him killing Elsie, right? Or so we think. He has no knowledge of it. Like he tried calling mm -hmm. her in the park. Yeah, and she was missing. She was already dead. Like I said that last week. I go, what's the only other place we've ever seen in the park where you know no one can be reached? It's that room Teresa went into. It's the yeah. Same thing with Elsie. So that's how I knew Elsie was dead already. Uh -huh. You know. Um, <laughs> But, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I really, I don't know. It's just, One thing, though, <sighs> it's we're getting... We definitely, this episode, you know, for me was confirmation, 100%, that the shit going on with William... I mean, more and more evidence that William and Dolores are in the past right now. Yes, like, this is 100%. a past event. And 100%. the reason for that... My reason for that this episode is, you know, oh, Ford's narrative is already done. He dug up some old town, you know, from, like, how long ago, right? And we've seen that town with the church and all that stuff. And, you know, when Dolores is having her flashback, when she pulls the gun on her own head, there's the burnt-out church steeple. And if you look carefully on the ground, you see the rooftops of houses sticking out of the ground, like, that much, four to six mm -hmm. inches. Yeah. So they were standing on top of a buried town. Yep. And then, you know, the town's been dug up. So yeah. this was in the well, past. When, when Dolores I got, was I got another this, one for you. Well, when Dolores hmm. was having this, I was, I'm like, she's like, she's having these, these, and I'm like, are we getting like Dolores from the future? Like remembering, you know, like the town that Ford built? And I'm like, no, no, no. Cause then we saw, we saw Maeve, right? And we saw her with her daughter and we we're like, okay, so we know that's the past. So yeah, that, that's exactly what it was. It, it was a, a previous vision that she already had. Because there's time jumping, and I'm like, there's no reason they can't time jump to the future. Right? And yeah, show exactly. something that hasn't happened. But when they showed that, I was like, with everything that's going on with Maeve, it's very unlikely that that is a future time jump and it, it is a past time jump. However, we did have a third. Like, like there, there's three, and I think that's what you're getting at, John, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, the, the victim that they found of uh, Wyatt's attacks, that blonde-haired woman is the woman who... Dolores walked by. Yeah. Well, but is the one who greeted William into the park. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And the man in black said, "They haven't retired you yet, you know, like like he knew her. So she used to be doing that. She used to be the greeter, and now she's in the narrative. So, uh -huh. I mean, what? And and, and I, I was actually having a conversation with a, with a coworker about this, and she's not convinced. And I'm like, there's no way it's not. Yeah. It has to be. Now, like five 100%. episodes ago, we could have debated it a little bit, but not anymore. I don't know when it's I said this. Episode two. Episode two. Well, yeah. You guys remember, I came into fact, the podcast yes. going, guys, I feel like this was in the past. And you're like, no, no, everybody dismissed it. And like three episodes later, and then when I we had that Google discussion. And, and we're like, like, yeah, no, yep. there's the, this is how it is. It's great. And yeah. this episode even further cement. I don't know when I said this two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whenever, but that the incident was Dolores going Terminator. 
mm-hmm. on people. Yes. Yeah. I am a hundred percent percent convinced that was the original incident. Yeah. Because in the flashback, you know, they're screaming, people are getting shot, you know, there's blood flying everywhere. And, you know, Dolores is looking through the memory, and then, you know, she looks and hears herself standing there covered in fucking blood, and she's about to blow her brains out. And then she yeah. flashes back, you know, to the current past time, standing there with William about to blow her brains out. <laughs> yeah. And it, there was the other part. She, you know, goes to get water for the downed, uh, like, ambushing guy or whatever who was shot with an arrow. She goes to get water, and she sees her body floating in the river. Turns around, nobody's there. Turns around, the body's gone. Turns around, William and, you know, the dying guy are there. Like, I'm sorry, I'd have myself yeah. committed at that point. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. She doesn't know when she is. Yeah, and Dolores just, she freaks out and she goes, when is, wh- where are we? Is this now? Like, she, you could already see she's breaking down in the past. She She's losing track of time. So but now, she's yeah. standing, like at that point, she's standing on the site that, if my theory is correct, she's standing on the site where she went psycho and started shooting everybody. Yeah. So. And this This is now, this is a whole nother time. This is before William gets there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So we have before William, we have William, and then we have Man in Black. Mm-hmm. Right. So three different timelines going on right now. So it, it's absolutely it's crazy, and that just begs to to me to question where the hell is Dolores right now in present day? The Man in Black took her, right? No, the no. Man in Black. No, I'm sorry. Why it's Men took her? That was it. Dolores. Yes. Because that's Teddy's mission right now is to rescue Dolores from Wyatt's Oh no, the man act. in black made that up. Did he make that up? Yeah. yeah, Dolores isn't Dolores right now, I'll tell you what she's doing. She's fucking wandering around as if she's with with uh William right now in those places in the current time. That's where she is. Because remember we, we talked I think Dom mentioned it like in episode two or whatever when they were like Oh, this when they like when they tried to throw us off. Where they were like, "There's a host out in blah blah blah." Yes. Oh my god, you're right. Off, that was like pattern. episode four or five. You're right. Yeah, it was when episode, it was yeah. she uh, re- she comes back, yeah. there's the outlaws killing her family. She turns, you know, she pulls the gun out and shoots one of the outlaws dead, and then she stumbles off. And thirty seconds later, we see her stumble into William and Logan's, you know, little camp there. Right. So if so that's she's... the past, you're right. She's stumbling around, reliving those exact moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's still stumbling around the desert, to our knowledge, at this moment in present day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but then we have we have uh, in our present day now we have the man in black um, who's who's still looking for Wyatt, um, running around with Teddy. Teddy's starting to remember shit. Uh, but just before that, we have like some weird Minotaur dude. Like, rushing Teddy, who's one of Wyatt's men, supposedly. And all I could think of is, like, this guy looks like a minotaur, right? I'm sorry, you're getting, you're looking for a maze, and you're getting close, you think, and now you get attacked by a fucking minotaur? Yeah. So, I, this thing was seven feet tall, buff, had a bull's head, didn't die when they pumped six bullets into it. Yeah, now we just need Ariadne's thread. Well, I'm like, I'm thinking now... If you guys ever watched the original movie, which I don't think you guys did, I know John started to, uh, and I don't think Mike did at all, but um, in the original movie, there was the three three different um, parks. There was Westworld, there was um, Medieval World, uh, and Roman World, and all three of them were with, you could get on a horse, which they did in the movie once every, once shit hit the fan, and you could ride to the other parks. Um, they all existed within the same space, so I'm like now... Is there some kind of fantasy world not far, and they're like on the edge of Westworld, and and maybe there's another park. Uh, and Ford's pulling, you know, he somehow stole a host or two from there. Because at the very mm-hmm. end, we start seeing all these creature-like looking things, you know, that they, they're supposedly wise men, which they very well could be. Um, but they're they're also very fantasy uh, fantasy esque. So that's a fucking terrifying. minotaur. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, Man in Black's Hank choking it, like, get the axe! And then, all of a sudden, Teddy flashes back to episode one for us, when the Man in Black is dragging Dolores out for some, you know, happy fun time in the barn. Yep. 
So, you know, that's when, when Man in Black kind of reveals some stuff uh, to Teddy when he's like, look, I had a wife. Um, she killed herself. Um, she OD'd, according to, you know, my daughter. Uh, we had 30 years of marriage, and my wife was afraid of me for some reason, and I've never shown her the side of me that you see in the park here. Like, I've always what? been really nice, you know, whatever, all that. I was um, the good guy. Yeah. But and she knew. So he came to the park here, and he killed Maeve. And then Maeve's daughter, but Maeve just didn't want to die, and that's when we saw, you know, the whole Maeve freak out in the repair room kind of thing going on. Um, and, you know, he mentioned Arnold's game cuts deep. Um, he, um, yeah, as he said, he wanted to see, could, was I a monster? Could I do this? And, oh, looks like you could there, champ. But, you know, uh, how did he put it? Like, in that brief moment, like, when she refused to die... She was more, I forget if he says more real or more alive, or like was actually alive, you know, just for that brief little... He said brief he felt little... nothing when he killed them. Right, until he saw her carrying them off, and then, you know, something got to him. Yeah, and this is also the the first time that uh, he's ever seen the maze. That was the fir the first bit of information. Right, because when she collapsed, she was in the middle of the symbol for the maze. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but now with this information that he was indeed married, um, 30 years of marriage, and we know that the flashback, supposedly, the, the, the flashback that we're unaware of, you know, as an audience, um, we also know that William was engaged, uh, the last time, you know, when, when present day in the park is going on, we know he's engaged mm -hmm. to, uh, his buddy's, uh, sister. And we so, found out in episode one, you know, when the man in black says to the, you know, to somebody, he's like, I've been coming here for 30 fucking years. Yeah, exactly. So that's just more confirmation that the man in black is actually William. And as much as like the evidence keeps piling and piling, I would just love for it to be a complete, you know, bait and switch. And it winds up the man in black is someone else we've seen. Yeah. Man in black is actually <laughs> Dolores the whole time. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know. No, there, there's no doubt about it. He's he's William. Like, yeah, I would bet my life on it. I have no idea. Like, what's next? This is a show you can't just watch. You have to. You have to dissect the show. I mean, you're missing so to. much. You have to. I have a finale or leading up to the finale prediction. The Man in Black is going to find the maze, be it a physical place or whatever, and he, when he gets there, he's going to find a very, very confused and manic Dolores. It's very possible. Um, I see Spots in chat saying, so is the maze a physical location or a mental, metaphorical journey uh, to self-awareness? I think it is a... I think it's both, um, but I think it, it's definitely a physical, physical place. We've been asking this question for about five weeks now. Mm -hmm. Like, is it a physical place? Is it, like, some kind of mental thing... Is it both, you know, like, and why? is it this native myth that they made up for one of these narratives or if, could possibly be real, like the sum of a man's experience? If it was a metaphorical journey, I don't think there would be a physical drawing of the maze. I think it would just True. be spoken, a spoken maze, you know, but now we've seen it drawn in the dirt. We've seen it imprinted in their scalps. Um, or the the top of their skull or whatever that was, uh, we've seen it in a few different spots now. Uh, so yeah, I still feel like it's a it's a physical place. I mean, if it was a metaphorical anything, it would be some kind of you know journey to self introspection or whatever. Just like see your true self somehow. I, I think the maze is is more for the the robots than it is for like the man in black. Um, and mm -hmm. what I feel like he's trying to do is find the maze for Dolores, um, so he can free Dolores from all of this and and potentially take her home with him. I, I, I think mean, that's his goal. And it's you know they keep they they keep piling this on, and I'm thinking, you know, find out your inner self for the robots and everything. We talked how many episodes ago when Ford brought up the theory of bicameralism. The part of that theory is that the bicameral mind is incapable of self-introspection mm -hmm. and figuring out their own self. So, I mean, 
there's more they keep they're, they're like I don't know they're like really shoving that topic at us like well, they're going ham with it if you if you remember um uh if you, what was it two last week or yeah last week when uh him and Dolores were on the train right and then he said you know um I've never felt this way I've kind of like you you've unlocked me and she goes I'm not a key you know and and that that just I have a feeling more, she is yeah it's more more reason for me to believe that she's oh, of course she's like the that. fucking key she's the first host yeah she's the first robot they ever made so if she's if there's going to be a key to anything oh, there you are right there mhm she's the person in the middle like in the symbol probably yep bring her to the center of the maze and bam it opens up arnold's po- you know the host that is now arnold walks out of the wall the floor ground opens up and launches them to mars a, future an world. ion Future An world. ion cannon vaporizes them from space. I don't fucking know. <laughs> no. Uh, and I, it's, it's very interesting. I think, um, John, I, I believe Chrissy was the one that said this. Um, episode 9 is going to, which is the next episode, it's going to be the one that they revealed the time jump. Uh, that's going to be the episode where all the shit hits the fan. Um, and then we're going to like deal with the aftermath of that in episode 10. Because um, mm. it's going to be too much to get the time reveal in episode 10. I, I 100% agree. We're gonna need that that week to just be like, <gasps> and this or is I should HBO say, we show. as in the average fan that's not paying attention to stuff like this, you know, because we've already accepted there's a time jump. We we know it. We're hundred percent positive there's a time jump. Um, now, but the if, average fan that is watching this that's not sitting there scouring over every bit of evidence online and and sitting in the reddits and you know different things like that, they're not gonna have any idea. No. Right, and. <laughs> As far as, um, I mean, this is an HBO show. If they follow the, and Game of Thrones is getting away from this, but if they follow the Game of Thrones structure, episode nine is the shit goes down episode. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's your Red Wedding. That's your Bye Bye Ned. That's your, you know, Battle of the Blackwater. All the crazy, huge fucking episodes. And episode 10 is the cleanup aftermath. Yep. So. So I I 100% have the feeling that uh, that is where this is going. Um, yeah, probably. But next week's episode is called The Well-Tempered Clavier. Um, oh my. Maeve approaches Sweetwater's longtime outlaw Hector with a bold proposition, which we mm. didn't see coming at all. So bold. Uh, William tries to convince Logan to help liberate Dolores. Yeah, good luck with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teddy and the man in black get closer to what they're looking for. Uh Stubbs, which that's uh, Hemsworth. Um, that, that's Hemsworth. Ashley Stubbs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, suspicions are aroused, uh, which we've already caught on to, and uh, Ford cautions Bernard against seeking answers to questions best left unasked. So basically, nothing that we don't already know. A perfect synopsis. <laughs> Pretty much. Thanks for telling us nothing. <laughs> Thanks for giving us a whole paragraph of nothing. But At least it's a whole paragraph of nothing and not like three words per character. That That is true. That is true. Never forgive them for the North remembers. <laughs> but anyway, that is our show. Uh, I just want to say thank you to IC Spots for joining us in chat. It's been a pleasure. Mike, yes. where can the people find you? Twitter, there, at Philodrin. Um, Insert clever thing about my mind melting. It's so bad I can't even think excellent John where can people find you you can find me at no more no more on twitter wishing this show would never goddamn end <laughs> uh, you can find me down below at phenomenon p-h-e-n-o-m-e-d-o-m uh, you can also find us all and more on facebook gmail g plus twitter myspace and right here on youtube at slash aso tv podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite tv shows games and movies until next time which one of us is a robot? <gasps> it's dumb. It runs me. You can't just give away the secret like that, John. You gotta wait for the finale to reveal it. Or, or, or next week. One of the two.